during the very feast of unleavened bread, also termed the bread of affliction, we are given a divine promise of our freedom in Yahweh. There is a day given from which we are to count 50 days towards our freedom. This is the day known as first sheaf or first fruits. We have already seen that it is the Lord Yeshua who fulfills the spring feasts we have covered. So also does the Messiah fulfill this day of promise. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Let us now understand the significance of this day in relation to the other feast days. You have already seen the Abib calendar video and learned that the determining of the holy days are dependent on Yahweh's agricultural and new moon calendar. We are now in the week of Passover and want to understand when the day of the Habikurim, that is, first fruits, is. Let us first see what scriptures say. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord, to be accepted for you. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So we have discovered the barley is harvestable, and the first sample of the crop is to be brought to the priest to make the entire harvest acceptable to Yahweh so that Israel might eat of it. The day divinely fixed for this is the day after the Sabbath day, during the week of Passover. Some understand the sheaf to mean a bushel of grain that is waved by the priest, while others see the first fruits to be crushed barley that was brought on the altar, just as Yeshua was crushed for us. In all cases, the day of first fruits is fulfilled in Yeshua. Yeshua, who was crushed for our sins and on our behalf, rose on this day during the week of Passover, fulfilling the prophetical meaning of the day of first fruits. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? When, during Passover, did we read from scriptures? was the first fruits to be waved by the priest on the day after the Sabbath. There is some confusion about this set time in our day, so we will devote some time to this question. Many people today think this to mean after the 15th of Aviv, which is a holy day, a day on which no work is to be done. But scriptures differentiates between holy days and the Holy Sabbath Day. For this we need to go to the Hebrew text. Sabbath is written in the Hebrew with a sheen, a bet and a tav. This is the same word used for the Sabbath at creation and the word used when Yahweh reminds us to keep the Sabbath as a token of his covenant. This word is always used for the seventh day of the week. The 15th of Aviv, as mentioned, is one of the holy days in scriptures, but it is not the Sabbath. The word for feast is Chag, a Chet and a Gimel. And for a holy gathering, it is the word Mikra, a Mem, a Kof, a Resh and an Aleph. Thus, scriptures is not instructing us to start the counting of 50 from after the holy feast of the 15th, the command is to begin after the Sabbath day, the seventh day. We have also been given some values to consider in getting to the correct 50th day, which is the day of Shavuot or Pentecost. We are to count seven weeks as well as seven Sabbaths. Now, there are no seven holy days between first fruits and Shavuot, so this again is referring to the weekly Holy Sabbath. Here it is also the same word for Sabbath once again. This is straight from the Hebrew text. Some have made this word to translate as weeks, 
but that is no fault of the manuscript. It is the misunderstanding of the translator. For example, the German word Papier means paper. If someone makes this to translate into huge gorilla, it is no undoing of the language, but rather a faulty interpretation for which the scholar is responsible. So we understand that neglecting to attain a correct understanding of the Omer, which is the sheaf, will be to deny the redemptive work of Lord Yeshua. As we as his followers have to remain in the pattern he set out for us. If you have attained a more in-depth understanding of this topic, you are invited to respectfully reach out to others who may not have properly understood this aspect of the feasts and the counting to Shavuot or Pentecost and explain it to them. The counting of the Omo, which is the sheaf to the 50th day, begins on the day after the weekly Sabbath during the Passover week. In this chart, we have the sacrificial week of Yeshua for our example. This is the day Yeshua presented himself to the Father as our first fruits. He had already risen when the woman came to the tomb. Remaining faithful to the text, seven Sabbaths and seven weeks, counting to the 50th day, always brings us to the first day of the week, known to us in our culture as Sunday. Shavuot is the only feast day without a specific fixed date. This is because it is dependent on the allotment of the Sabbath day during Passover for the counting of the sheaf the day after. We will now take a look at Shavuot or Pentecost, the day of freedom given us by our God and His Son and Messiah. Shalom my friend.